Hi, I'm Jeff Murrah. I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today I'm going to be talking about what was going on on January the 5th, 1836 in Texas. Uh, I know this is a break from uh, my coverage of the filibusters, but I felt like I needed to go ahead and uh, address this. Uh, on this date, you know, there were several things going on uh, as the revolution or uh, war for independence, uh, Texas independence was getting underway. And I needed to go ahead and cover them uh, because there's been so many misconceptions about them. Well, on this day, January 5th, David Crockett and uh, a team of about 30 uh, Tennesseans arrive in Nacogdoches. Nacogdoches uh, back then was a major stopping point uh, for people entering Texas. You know, there were a lot of poker games going on there where they tried to fleece the newcomers uh, of their money and so forth. But uh, David Crockett was a well-known person. And, uh, you know, prior to uh, arriving in Texas, you know, that's when he made this speech. Let's see, let me read it here so I get it right. Since you have chosen to elect a man with timber toe to succeed me, you may all go to hell and I'll go to Texas. Now, timber toe... Uh, is the derogatory term that they uh, used at that time for people that had a wooden leg. And uh, in this case, Crockett was referring to a man by the name of Adam Huntsman, who beat him in the election. Uh, Crockett was not happy with the results of the election, so he went on uh, and came on to Texas. And uh, while in Nacogdoches, he uh, went ahead and pledged his allegiance to the Republic of Texas. And, uh, you know, in, in doing so, he did have them modify uh, the paper that he signed to where it said that they would have a Republican form of government uh, in Texas. He had had enough of uh, some of the other political systems. Now, I, I mention this because a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, this image is portrayed by, you know, John Wayne, and I know Red Skelton, uh, and a few others, that the battle for the Alamo was about advancing the United States. No, it wasn't. Uh, the men who fought there were fighting for Texas independence. Uh, some of them had even gone so far as to renounce their U.S. citizenship. This was not an attempt to expand the United States into Texas. Uh, you know, there were some politicians that wanted that to happen, but that was not uh, the intention of the people at the time. Now, also in January, you had a couple other things going. I mean, Santa Ana was still fuming about costs having surrendered uh, San Antonio to the Texans, and he had come up with a four-point plan uh, for the conquering of Texas. And in doing so, you know, he was going to... Uh, root out all the uh, the rebels and those that weren't rebels. He was going to round up and move to interior places, give all the best land uh, to Mexican soldiers and officers. And he would consider anybody was <clears throat> bringing in weapons or uh, ammunition at the time to be considered pirates. And of course, you know, the uh, penalty for being a pirate at that point was death. You know, yeah, just yeah, yeah, and that was his attitude, uh, and uh, he was going to uh, execute that in Texas. Now, bear in mind, he had recently uh, let his army run loose in Zacatecas uh, to put down a rebellion there, uh, and part of this, you know, was one of those things where the commander turned his face and allowed the men to do their own thing, uh, killing, pillaging, raping, you know, whatever in Zacatecas, and so. Uh, the people living in Texas had reason to be scared. Now, in the midst of all this is a strange fellow by the name of Dr. James Grant. Now, James Grant, uh, first of all, let me go ahead and point out, uh, in early Texas independence, there are three different James Grants. Uh, so I don't want you to get them confused, because some of the history books will talk about James Grant and Dr. James Grant, uh, not necessarily the same one. This James Grant uh, had uh, you know, been operating over in North America uh, 
you know, he had ties to the East India Company. Uh, he was following orders from a British spy master. He was essentially a spy. I mean, a lot of times we have this image of British spies based on James Bond. Uh, but the British spies were operating uh, in the uh, early part of Texas independence in the um, you know, 19th century. And uh, as part of it, you know, this same James Grant had played a role in a Fredonian rebellion. And I talked about that the other day uh, because they wanted to stir things up in Texas so that there was a buffer zone between the United States and Mexico. And as uh, the Texas independence movement was growing, it was this James Grant, that, uh, the Scottish-born uh, doctor, that went into the town of San Antonio, usurped authority, said that he was the commander of the Matamoros Expeditionary Force. He commandeered all the supplies. So although the Texas Army had uh, procured supplies with the capture of San Antonio, he took them all, uh, along with a lot of men, and started heading down in the direction of Matamoros. Now, he had uh, another agenda. He had large land holdings uh, further into Mexico, and he wanted to uh, rescue them. Now, the Matamoros expedition comes into play a little bit later on in the story of Texas independence. Uh, but I, I wanted to go ahead and give you an idea of what was going on at the time. You know, uh, Davy Crockett arrives. Uh, this Matamoros expedition had already taken off and was uh, between San Antonio and Matamoros at that point. Uh, Santa Ana was uh, sharpening his swords, getting ready to march his army uh, to go ahead and take Texas. Uh, it was a mess. But uh, this is the mess that David Crockett stepped into. Now, on arriving in, San, in uh, Nacogdoches, uh, they shot off a cannon, you know, gave him uh, a big uh, feast. Now, this was uh, apparently something that had started in Nacogdoches because back in November, just a couple of months before, they had had another huge feast. Uh, a fellow by the name of Adolphus Stern uh, footed the bill for that one. It was called the Feast of Liberty, and it was for the New Orleans Grays, you know, some volunteers that came in to fight for Texas independence. And uh, because the people of Nacogdoches were appreciative. Back then, they uh, appreciated help. And um, with Davy Crockett arriving, they uh, most of his men went ahead and signed allegiance to Texas. Now, two men retained their U.S. citizenship and went back. Uh, but uh, they did have a big feast for him there. Uh, got him well taken care of. Uh, because Crockett had in mind that he wanted to be uh, one of our representatives in the Republic. Um, and uh, some of the letters he wrote that were considered his last letters were uh, from that... Uh, time period. Uh, now, on an ironic note, uh, the ha Adam Huntsman, who had beat Crockett uh, in the election for the U.S. House, uh, of course, he didn't accomplish a whole lot except, uh, you know, pass some bills that uh, benefited some of the banks and tariffs and so forth. Um, and he was defeated the next uh, election go-round by none other than David Crockett's son. I say David Crockett because he did not like the term Davy. He preferred David. So uh, this will give you a rundown as to what was going on uh, in Texas in January of 1836. As uh, you know, because with uh, February and March coming up, we're looking at uh, the Texas High Holy Day, so to speak, um, when many of these events took place. So I'm um, glad you tuned in. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Vaya con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.